our microbe cells drastically outnumber our own human cells by estimates of three to 10 times. So that holobiont concept that we talked about earlier means that our community is actually more asexual microbes than it is human. So the microbiota isn't just bacteria. It also includes viruses, fungi, and other characters. And we have co-evolved with them and delegated them tasks that our body can't do. And our microbes wear many hats because there are so many of them and they have so many different abilities within. And when we're healthy, it's a win-win situation. We give them the room and board. They help us develop and influence our entire body from birth to death. They jive they digest our food and regulate our metabolism. They synthesize vitamins and metabolites that we need but can't produce ourselves. They keep bad microbes in check to keep us healthy, in part by maintaining our gut barrier, and they train our immune system to be strong. This seems like a fair trade, right? So what bacteria are there and in what amounts is generally stable. Though it can change from short-term influences, like a course of antibiotics, it usually bounces back. However, long-term influences, such as the foods we eat every day, stress, medications or substances, and severe infections can shift the composition in a more significant way. But to get from microbe to brain, we need to understand a little bit more about the gut-brain axis. First of all, we speak the same biochemical language, and that allows us to communicate back and forth, both directly and indirectly, using our neural, immune, and endocrine or hormonal systems, and the microbes that act through producing metabolites, but also acting directly at the gut barrier. This is what we call interkingdom signaling. So if we look over here on the right, my right, uh, we see a diagram of the gut-brain axis. So let's explore this a little bit more under the concept of stress, because while stress is perceived in our brain, it's experienced through our entire body. So when we encounter a stressor, you can see that as the green items on the diagram, this activates our sympathetic or fight or flight nervous system. We get fast hormones like adrenaline and the slower response of the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal response, also known as the HPA axis. You've probably heard about this because this signals from your brain to your adrenals, which are right on top of your kidneys, to increase hormones like cortisol. These type of hormones mobilize the resources that we need for that allostatic response. At the same time, these hormones can make our gut more permeable, ideally so we can absorb as many nutrients as possible when we're stressed. Once the stressor is dealt with, cortisol actually turns off the HPA axis. The vagus nerve, which is that direct neural highway from our brain to our gut, is also our main parasympathetic nerve that helps our body reset. We can think of it as the brakes to the sympathetic response being the gas pedal. So to prevent disease and burnout, we must be able to turn this response on when needed and off when it's not. However, when we have chronic stress, this can change how our body is functioning. Cortisol can actually lose the ability to turn off the stress response. This can lead to elevated or dysregulated levels of hormones. It can lead to gut dysbiosis or leaky gut. And this is where our bad microbes are literally feeding and growing on our stress hormones to outnumber our good bacteria. And this causes dysfunction at the gut barrier. It's not actually leaky, but there's a lot of stuff going on there. These changes at the gut fuel low-grade inflammation that makes its way to the brain, both by circulation 
and through the vagus nerve. This also prevents the parasympathetic vagus nerve from being able to calm our body down or calm our brain down. Chronic inflammation in the brain can wreak havoc, and this can actually cause many of the changes that lead to poor mental health, including increased stress sensitivity, excessive anxiety, depression, altered sleep, body symptoms like tension, or just the exacerbation of basically any condition you already have. And without brakes on your car, you'll eventually run out of gas or even worse, crash. <laughs>